Dr. Noshimoto Kakiuchi made time to speak with us so she and her team can connect with you, which is so important. Because sometimes it seems nothing is being done on behalf of those living with endo and adenomyosis and other conditions, but the work is happening. Her passion and enthusiasm are contagious. Imagine going to work each day thinking that the research you are running could one day release millions from the painful clutches of endometriosis and possibly adenomyosis too. To watch our full conversation, please download the Uterine Kind app and you will find the video recording of the interview with a transcript for following along in the explore section of the app. Before we begin, a primer on the key characters in our conversation today, IL-8 and the Amy 109 antibody. So when there is an infection or injury, immune cells release interleukin-8, which attracts other immune cells to the site of the inflammation. The accumulation of immune cells at the site of inflammation helps to fight off the infection or repair the injury. Neutrophils are a type of white blood cell that are important for fighting infections. IL-8 attracts them to the site of inflammation, and once at the site of inflammation, neutrophils help to clear the infection by engulfing and killing bacteria. IL-8 is also involved in angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood vessels. IL-8 can stimulate the growth of blood vessels, which is important for wound healing and tissue repair. So those are the good things, right? It's got its good side and it's got its not so good side. IL-8 has been implicated in the development and progression of cancer. It can promote tumor growth by stimulating angiogenesis and promoting the recruitment of immune cells that can support tumor growth. IL-8 has been implicated in the development of autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis and psoriasis. In these diseases, the immune system attacks healthy tissue in the body, leading to inflammation and tissue damage. IL-8 is a versatile protein that plays an important role in the immune response, inflammation, wound healing, and the development of new blood vessels. However, dysregulation of IL-8 can lead to the development of diseases such as cancer and autoimmune diseases. And finally, IL-8 may act as a growth factor in the endometrium and may also play a role in the development of endometriosis by promoting the vicious cycle of endometrial-like cell attachment, cell growth, and the further secretion of IL-8. Now, a little bit of a spoiler alert because we're going to talk about the super exciting discovery, Amy 109, in our interview, but a little bit of an introduction first. Amy 109 is an antibody that binds to IL-8 and was created by Chugai. It is developed to apply Chugai's unique recycling antibody technology, which means that the the IL-8 antibody, it remains active in the body for a fairly long period of time. So instead of having to take daily medications or weekly medications even, Amy 109 is thought to be effective with only a one-month dose, so a dose each month. With its anti-inflammatory action, Amy 109 is expected to offer patients a non-hormonal related therapy. And that is the most exciting part of all. I mean, kind of. It's just, it's really exciting that so far in their research, it's effective, but it's also exciting that it's non-hormonal, right? I can hear people cheering. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you guy and their team. So. Typically, the only effective treatment for endometriosis is excision surgery, which is a really intense procedure that requires a highly skilled surgeon, highly skilled, an absolute specialist. This is not an everyday kind of gynecologic surgeon that can do this by any means. This is someone who specializes in excision surgery, right? So you have excision surgery as the gold standard treatment for endometriosis, and then you have symptom suppressors. Amy 109 fits that sweet spot that is non-surgical and is not designed to to merely suppress symptoms, but it is, is designed to actually halt and reverse endometriosis. So now that we have that little primer out of the way, 
Let's continue. A recent published research has caused hope to soar for millions of people living with endometriosis, and we are grateful and honored to have one of the lead researchers spend time with us today on Hello Uterus. Dr. Ayoko Nishimoto Kakiuchi has a PhD in biological science and is the global project leader of the translational research division of Chugai Pharmaceutical Company in Japan. She and others published the paper titled, A Long-Acting Anti-IL-8 Antibody Improves Inflammation and Fibrosis in Endometriosis. And we're grateful for her time today. Welcome to Hello Uterus, Doctor. Yeah, thank you, I'm honored to this uh, great opportunity. And I'm very happy to, uh, to talking with you. Great. I'm so excited as well. So let's dive right in. We have a lot to cover. I, and, and there are so many people that are um, excited to hear information directly from you who was in charge of the research. So what is IL-8 and what role does it play in endometriosis? Yeah. Interleukin-8, IL-8 is one of the inflammatory factors like chemokine. And IL-8 induces the progression of endometriosis, especially fibrosis. Uh, so IL-8 is well known to be high expression in endometriosis patients, and uh, Chugai had an IL-8 antibody. But uh, there are big hurdles to evaluate the contribution of IL-8 in endometriosis. So uh, we uh, challenged to overcome these uh, hurdles. The ha first hurdle was a lack of appropriate animal model. So mice and rats are common experimental animals, but they don't have IL-8. Mm. Cyclic menstruation bleeding seems to be a trigger of chronic inflammation and progression of endometriosis. But only limited primates have cyclic menstrual bleeding. To solve these problems, we collaborated with Dr. Sankai at Tsukuba Primate Research Center, National Institute of Biomedical Innovation, Health and Nutrition in Japan. And they bleed and raise monkeys in their research center. And using endometriosis monkey models is a very unique point of our research. Mm. And the second hurdle was a brush, uh, precise laparoscopic observation. The body weight of female cyanomorgas monkeys are three kilograms like newborn baby. Therefore, we needed a gynecologist who is an ex excellent expert of laparoscopic observation for evaluation. So, Professor Kono in Jiji Medical University joined our research and overcome this point and also contributed as a gynecologist for evaluation aligned clinical practice. So our collaborative research was succeeded to evaluate the role of IL-8 using the monkeys with endometriosis. Excellent. So a lot of hurdles to overcome before you could get to the point where you could begin yeah. the research. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, yes. and you identified and named Amy 109, and you named it Amy 109 to have a female name associated. Um, and can you tell us about Amy 109? Um, Amy 109 is a long-acting anti-IRAT antibody with our unique recycling technology. And uh, uh, the female name uh, is uh, this uh, drug is for the female. So we named the female name. And uh, Amy well, I, has a, a very high technical, high, high tech antibody, the pH dependent binding function. 
Amy19 binds to IL8 in neutral pH like blood, but releases IL8 under the acidic condition. Basically, antibodies work in blood and travel through the bloodstream. An endosome is an intercellular organelle, like a garbage disposal box, because endosome is a place to digest protein. The key point is recycling antibody uses a different or pH, pH between blood and endosome in the cell. So blood is neutral pH condition and endosome is an acidic condition. So conventional antibodies continue to bind to IL-8 in the endosome. So both antibodies and IL-8 are digested in the endosome. On the other hand, Amy19 can release IL-8 in endosome under acidic condition. So Amy19 is come back to blood. So they can bind to IL-8 again. This is a recycling antibody. Recycling, uh, yeah. Yeah. Recycling. <laughs> it's very <really> high tech. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is. That's why we're so glad we have you to explain it. <laughs> yes. Recycling antibody has an advantage of being a convenient drug like self injection. Actually, in Sinomorogas monkey studies, Conventional antibody was administrated by weekly intravenous injection. On the other hand, AME19 was administrated every four weeks with subcutaneous injection. So very convenient. Yes, that's fantastic. And and so Amy one so that it recycles, it's able, it, it is able to remain in the body because it is a recycling antibody. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how and, and what does it when it encounters IL-8, what does it do to it? So endometriosis progresses with adhesion to surrounding organs, uh, such as between fallopian tube and ovary. That's the cause of infertility. In non-clinical study using the monkeys with endometriosis, Amy 9 showed not only the reduction of the lesion size, and but also the reduction of adhesions and fibrosis in endometriosis. Were you surprised by the results? Yes, we are surprised <laughs> at the result that IL inhibition showed the reduction of fibrosis because uh, we had considered process of fibrosis were not reversible. And so we are very surprised. Yeah, so um, it, I just, did you celebrate? Because I imagine when you explain all the hurdles that you had to get across, mm -hmm. then, then you finally arrive at this point in time. And was there, was there a celebration in the lab? Did everyone was everyone thrilled? Yeah, when we found the sign of IL-8 inhibition, we are very happy. However, these signs were observed in small scale using the conventional antibody. So we wanted to obtain more robust data with a new antibody. Therefore, these data were a great motivation to generate recycling antibodies. Now, in fact, my colleagues uh, generated many recycling antibodies. Uh, so we evaluated the binding activity and stability. Yeah, finally, we selected the best one, ML9, among the many, many antibodies. So a lot of a lot of research to get to Amy 109. Yeah. Now, we had some questions from people on TikTok that were very excited to hear about this paper. And one of the questions was whether or not, well, given that IL-8 is needed for many functions in, in the body, 
and Amy 109 is used to target it, will that have other effects on the body? Mm. Yeah, we conducted the uh, non-clinical safety study with high dosage of amyl 9 up to 200 milligram per kg, uh, that is uh, 200, uh, 24 higher than efficacy dosage. And uh, we found that in all the test animals, there were no abnormalities in the menstrual cycle and reproductive organs, except for injection site reactions. But this injection re site reaction were very common adverse event in the subcutaneous injection of a protein formation, formulation, and not specifically attributable to amy and reversible. So um, we don't have enough information in human, but uh, from the non-clinical safety study, uh, we consider the Amy has the uh, no concern to uh, inhibit the other effect. So we, but uh, we have not enough data as of now. So we will carefully monitor to and evaluate whether Amy one nine have other effects on body in clinical studies. Well, that's certainly positive at at this stage to know mm -hmm. that with the data that you do have it appears that it does not negatively impact other than the injection site um, so that's very exciting and certainly human trials will need to be conducted in order to to validate whether or not there's any impact in the human body yes yeah so um would this treatment have any impact on adenomyosis? Oh, we hope amyl 9 becomes new treatment for adenomyosis. So endometriosis patients often have adenomyosis. So as of today, we don't have any data, but we might seek the possibility to evaluate the efficacy on adenomyosis. That would be amazing to to be able to impact both conditions, especially because they coexist in a large percentage of the patient population. Yes. And I, I'm assuming that it's a similar answer to whether or not this treatment might work for fibroids. Uh, unfortunately, fibroid is completely other disease, pathophysiologically uh, is different. Uh, FIB may sound related to with fibrosis, but fibroid is benign tumor of smooth muscle myoma. So, uh, different. It's a different, <laughs> different. disease. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, certainly being able to have a positive impact on endometriosis and potentially adenomyosis with a non-hormonal treatment, that's something that we actually haven't mentioned yet that's really important, um, is that this is a non-hormonal treatment for, for endometriosis, or will be after, after human trials are completed. Um, yeah. Can is there a way that the IL-8 protein can be used to detect endometriosis without surgery? Hmm, good idea. So non-invasive method is useful to encourage early diagnosis. So the delay of a diagnosis of endometriosis is a big problem. So uh, it could be uh, helpful to, for early diagnosis. That would be fantastic. And yes, mm -hmm. we know that it can take up to 10 years to be diagnosed with yeah. endometriosis. And, mm -hmm. and that the entire time that someone is seeking a diagnosis, the disease is progressing. So having, having diagnostics is, is really um, important. Does this treatment, and, I get, and also I, I, I wanna state 
that I believe I'm asking you for a theory rather than or a hypothesis rather than um, a definitive data backed answer. But does this treatment or would this treatment potentially have any implement implications on the general immune function and infection response in the body? Yeah, in non-clinical study, there was no implication on immune function, but there is a possibility to inhibit the immune function in human. So we will carefully monitor the safety in clinical studies. Excellent. And a question for you um, about the classification of endometriosis as a disease. Do you consider this now with the information about IL-8 coming to light? Do you consider it an autoimmune disease? Uh, I'm not sure, but some researchers think endometriosis is one of autoimmune disease, but I'm not sure. Okay. And um, so we await data from human trials. Have those human trials began? Uh, phase one study for safety evaluation was completed. So analysis is ongoing. So please write the result for a moment. And we are preparing for phase two study for efficacy evaluation. Excellent. And what is the timeline overall on the clinical trials? When, when might patients be able to, um, you know, really begin to get excited about the human trial data coming, being published? Mm. Yeah, this is ongoing. The plan is not fixed. <laughs> yeah, mm. so it's difficult to answer. <laughs> yeah. So difficult to determine how long it will take. Mm before those studies are concluded. And do you do you foresee having any clinical trials conducted in the United States? Uh, this point is not fixed, so it, um, I can't comment on the details. Okay, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And um, you, you have, as I said before, a lot of fans on TikTok, there were, so many comments that where people were were saying that they were crying at the the thought of being able to have a treatment that's non-hormonal that actually for the first time wouldn't just suppress symptoms but would actually halt and potentially reverse the disease what would you like to say to them about the work that you're doing and and you know, knowing that they're rooting for you, <laughs> um, <laughs> that they're cheering you on, what would you like to say to them about the work you're doing and about you guys' dedication to to female health? Yeah, so um, uh, 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 we, um, our team is very encouraged to hear the patient's voice. So, the development of an innovative drug with new mechanism is challenging for us, so, but we will do our best and challenge to accelerate the development of any online for patients or of you. Excellent. I, I, um, that I actually just got butterflies when you sent that, when you said that, like butterflies in my stomach feeling, you know, because, um, it is very challenging. You're breaking new ground and all of the research while, while we all want to get so excited, we mm -hmm. understand that you need to wait for the data to come in before you can get excited. And, um, so it's it's a you know one of those periods in time where there's a lot of hope and um and we hope that the data comes in quickly and we just we want to thank you for thank you and thank you guy for 
dedicating resources to study this condition <laughs> that is is so um destructive and damaging to the people who live with it and it it's very difficult to get funding for research to study mm -hmm. endometriosis yeah. and so we would like to just express our gratitude to you and to your team and to chugai for investing in this treatment and in this research to bring forward a non-hormonal treatment for endometriosis thank you so much yeah yeah thank you for the great opportunity to talking about our research and i'm very happy to hear the direct patient's voice that is very encourage us and uh, i agree to endometriosis is a uh, abandoned disease so we would like to change this situation and uh, i would like to uh, provide the very New tech, new uh, therapy for you in the future. New future, yes. <laughs> and we we want you to do that too. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Doctor, for spending this time with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you.